To make a circuit to light a single LED, all you need is a single resistor. You'll have a certain voltage power supply. Your LED will be rated for a certain forward voltage drop. Supply minus this drop equals the voltage across the resistor. Ohm's law of voltage equals current times resistance to figure out what resistor to put what current across the LED because the LED is current controlled for brightness. How much current is how bright? If you want to connect multiple LEDs in series, it's exactly the same. You need just one resistor. Power supply minus this drop minus this drop minus this drop, assuming your power supply is big enough, equals the voltage across the resistor, Ohm's law, and because it's in series, the current is the same across all or through all of the LEDs. But what about parallel? If you want to drive 10 LEDs at the same time and they each take 3 volts, then you would need at least a 30 volt supply to do them in series, but in parallel, you only need at least a 3 volt supply. And furthermore, if one of them burns out, the rest will keep going. But how many resistors do you need? Is there any reason this parallel circuit shouldn't work? It's the same as before, except since it's parallel, there's the same voltage drop across all of these, so it's supply voltage minus this voltage drop and hold on. What if you have have different color LEDs. They'll take different forward voltage drops. Kirchhoff's law requires, or explains that it is required, that when you have a parallel split and rejoin, the voltage drop across that whole split is the same for all of the individual paths. So if each of these LEDs requires a different voltage drop, it's not going to work. But what if you say, what if this path just has the maximum voltage. If this one requires 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, why can't this just be 3 volt? To answer that, let's do a super quick review of why an LED even has a voltage drop. This will be a quick overview, not a physics lesson. A semiconductor device like a diode, an LED, which is a diode, or a transistor junction is made from N and P layers of a semiconductor material which is silicon that's been doped. So you've got negatively inclined and positively inclined, and these together, when they just sit there, will form what's called a depletion layer. This depletion layer is where these two swap a little bit of charge due to the way that the physics work, and there is a static electric charge, in other words, a voltage, not a current, just a voltage. There is a potential difference there that opposes current flow. If you try to hook it up to just a very small voltage, it's not going to conduct. You have to increase the voltage to a certain point. By applying some voltage, you shrink the depletion layer. And once the depletion layer goes down to zero and it's effectively not there, once you've applied that amount of voltage, then it becomes roughly like a wire. Then any voltage above what the depletion layer requires is just going to let current through. It's not going to continue taking more voltage. An NP junction, a PN junction, is going to require a certain voltage drop, but it won't drop more. It's not like a resistor that'll drop anything you put across it. It'll only drop what the depletion layer requires. Very commonly, this is 0.6 volts or so. This is your base to emitter junction on a BJT, NPN. This is your regular diode. LEDs have a much bigger, well, they have the depletion layer and some other stuff going on, so they have a bigger voltage drop, but it's still the same thing. They're going to take up to a certain voltage drop and then stop. And then the current determines how bright it is. This is the issue. If these LEDs have a 1 volt, 2 volt, and 3 volt drop, then what's going to happen is you're going to have a 1 volt drop across this whole thing. Because this one here, it'll drop up to 1 volt, but it won't drop more. If you try to put more across, it's just going to, you know, the wires, it's, it's going to break this model. This, this model, this, this, this component model, we imagine that there's zero resistance on the wires and so forth. In reality, there is resistance on the wires, but like, you know, 0.1 ohm or less. So there's really, there's really, there's no resistors or anything to take that extra voltage we try to put across it. If we just uh, put this circuit in practice, what's going to happen is you'll have, let's say, 5 volts here, 1 volt on the 1 volt LED, and then you have 1 volt here and 1 volt here, and the 2 and the 3 volt LEDs won't even turn on. And then you'll get 4 volts across the resistor. If we use logic and say, well, what if 3 volts? We have 3 volts here, so that means we have to have 3 volts here. 2 volts is taken up by this LED, but where's the other 1 volt? There's no resistor or anything. There's nowhere for that drop to be. It's, it's, it's mathematically fallacious. The only situation that satisfies the math of Kirchhoff is the lowest one gets its voltage and then the rest of them just don't get enough voltage. But what if you have the same LED? What if they're all 
two volt LEDs. So it has the same voltage drop. You know, they're all the same color, the same manufacturer, the same batch even. They're not going to be exactly the same. They're going to be just a tiny bit off. When you have your depletion layer, if you apply, let's say, we'll start here at zero volts. So obviously at zero volts, your diode is not going to conduct. You go to a certain point, let's say here. Up until that point, your depletion layer is still plenty thick and, you know, this trickle, but essentially no current. So up until this point, there's essentially no current. If you apply a little more, then what happens is the depletion layer is getting really, really thin, and some current is able to sneak by just a little bit. Nowhere near actual conduction, but it starts to leak just a little bit. And then here is the actual voltage drop. You know, two volts for an LED, so being about two volts there. This is the point at which the depletion layer is actually gone. And then you go a tiny bit more, tiny bit more, and the depletion layer becomes like stably gone. Because if you're right on the edge, you know, it's gonna form and unform and form and unform a little bit. Give it a tiny bit more voltage. It'll, it'll take up to a certain maximum amount, you know, a little, a little smidgen above its rating to like absolutely completely smooth out the depletion layer so it just doesn't come back at all, even for a moment. And then it's a flat wire. So you keep conducting and conducting all the way to your supply. We'll say this is diode. So all the way up to your supply, this is not being dropped. It'll drop up to whatever it takes to just completely smooth out the depletion layer and then no more. From that point on, it's a wire. And if you have other LEDs in the batch, there's going to be variance. And that turned out to be more of a mess of lines than I wanted, but it gets the point across. If it's supposed to be a 2-volt LED, one of them might take 2.01, one of them might take 1.99. There's going to be variance no matter what. Even if you sit there and you bin them and you measure them with your multimeter and make sure they're all reading almost completely exactly the same voltage drop, there's still going to be a difference. And remember how I said some of them will partially conduct? Let's say we've got 1.99 volts here, 2.00, 2.01. So, like I said before, the lowest one is going to be the one that sets the voltage for this whole parallel sequence, and then this takes the rest. So all three of these are going to get 1.99 volts. These two are probably going to be on. All three of them are probably going to turn on, but the 1.99 is going to turn on more because its depletion layer is completely smoothed over. This one has just a hint of it left. This one has a little bit of a thicker hint. And maybe you've got a crappy batch and... You know, this is 2.11. That one might not even turn on at all, or it'll be so dim it may as well be off. So even if they all turn on, they're going to be turned on at different rates. And the problem is, when you size this resistor, right, it's the power, voltage, minus the single voltage drop. So if they're 2 volts, it'd be 2 volts. And then the resistor takes the rest, and then how do you calculate the current? It's the current you want going through one of these LEDs times 3, because you've got 3 of them. So... You have only one voltage drop, but you have three times the current going through the resistor, and then when it splits, current evenly splits along the paths. If you have six wires with the same resistance on each of the wires, you're going to get the same current on each of those. It's going to be split by six. But these conductions are very slightly different. This one is going to be taking as much current as it's given because its depletion layer is completely gone. It's going to let everything through that gets put into it. This one is going to resist some. This one is going to resist even more or even be almost completely shut off. So you have calculated the current you want to be going through one of them and you're counting on it being split, but it's not being split. This one is taking as much as it possibly can and if some of these are resisting their fair share, that extra is going to go through the LED with the lowest maximum forward voltage drop for its depletion layer. And it's going to be too bright, and it's going to burn out, most likely. And then what's going to happen is it's not going to conduct. So now the, the voltage drop is going to go up to 2, because now this is the lowest one, and... The, the resistor is going to have a slightly smaller voltage drop because this is going to cause a larger one until its depletion layer is gone. But the voltage drop across here only went down a tiny bit, which means the current across here only went down a tiny bit. Whereas you're dividing by two instead of three. So this one is not even getting as much current as this, but even much more. This one is going to be super bright and burn out real quick. This one will probably pop immediately. As soon as this one goes, that one will just gone. That's the problem. In order to do this in parallel with a single resistor, you're counting on the current to be evenly distributed. Even if you have LEDs that are evenly matched in voltage drop, there's still going to be variances and the current is going to be unevenly distributed. But now, 
you say, but what if? What if you have a margin? What if you say, okay, I'm only giving this 90% of the current. I need to go through it. That's fine. So if this one's taking a little extra, because you, you, know, you check them, they're all very close. Let's say this was 2.01. They're very close. So if one of them is slightly brighter, it's not going to matter. If one of them is taking slightly more current, it's not going to matter. Right. But parts fail. Naturally. Like even, even just normally. Things just suddenly fail. That's a, a fact of life. So this LED right here, even, even if you're not driving it over spec, you're just driving it normally, sometimes they just go poof. So now you're dividing the current not enough ways again, everything suddenly gets brighter and starts popping one by one. Three LEDs, three resistors. Now it doesn't matter how much voltage drop any of these wants. It doesn't even matter if they're different colors because the voltage drop across the parallel path is the same as the supply and every single one has a dedicated resistor. The LED is going to take as much as it needs to completely get rid of its depletion layer. Its resistor will take the rest and Kirchhoff will be satisfied because every Every single one of these pads will have the full voltage drop, even though each of these resistors will have a different voltage drop. Furthermore, if one of these paths goes away, then it doesn't matter. The current through these two is not going to change. The power supply current will go down, but each of these resistors is sized for just its LED because each of these is a completely separate Kirchhoff loop. None of them are interacting anymore, and so it's just supply voltage minus this voltage equals this voltage, then you calculate the current through this LED and you're done. So it's annoying, especially if you're breadboarding, to have to mess with 50 different resistors for everything you do, but it's just a fact of life. Especially with parallel components, you need extra resistors for parallel transistors, extra for parallel LEDs, extra for pretty much anything. Go look at your average motherboard on a computer and it looks like somebody sneezed all over it because all these little itty bitty dots is just a bunch of capacitors and resistors. Those little itty bitty minuscule little rectangles, resistors and capacitors everywhere. It's just a fact of life. Good thing they're so cheap. So while you appreciate the value of buying in bulk, I'll be seeing you.